Hi, thanks for tuning in to my VR Integrator how-to series. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the uh, radio menu and how to change the uh, menus itself and adding new categories and removing categories and changing out uh, with new widgets. So let's get started. Let's go to the Blueprint folder and we'll go over to the Blueprint UI motion controller. And once we have that open, uh, there's uh, the main thing we want to do is click on class defaults and we go to options. And here is where we set up the, the categories for the um, uh, menus. So they, they automatically <clears throat> expand itself uh, radially uh, based on how many uh, choices you put in. So right now there's the four that we start with. So let's say we want to add another uh, widget to it. So we'll go ahead and hit add element and then we'll go ahead and pick another uh, widget. Let's pick the torpedo. Um, which it that looks or the nuke is there a nuke in here I think there's a nuke yeah let's pick the nuke so basically now we'll have a nuke option on our main menu now the way this works is that the um, the, the menus are very dynamic and they load in their own stacks so the base stack is based on the the menu uh, itself so we click on here class defaults so this is the main menu stack all right so then whenever we load into let's pick a, a inventory because we have that opening another sub menu so once we uh, click on that um, what happens is let's go to the browser of that to show that off all right and then we want to go into the uh, graph version and then once we're in here, we'll go ahead and see on the clicked uh, button action. We can see it's pretty simple. What we do is just double check that we have our parent set, which is set whenever it's uh, being created. Um, and then we go to uh, the parent controller and pull up open sub menu. And then we pull its own menu set. So basically, if you look over here in this UMG widget itself, the slot inventory, there is a menu set here, um, which uh, is where you would set your, your widgets to display. So here we would have, uh, once we open... Um, we we'll click on that menu, which is the slot inventory. Then once that is hit, it opens these uh, a new menu stack, which would be the slot attack, slot barracks, slot factory, slot support. So it's pretty uh, pretty uh, straightforward of what you need. You just basically need to set the menu set and open sub menu on click. So basically, this is all you need to do to get that to work, to have uh, more sub menus to open. And when you hit the trigger button, it collapses back up in a reverse order. All right. So basically, it's, uh, what, what if we don't want to open a sub menu. Let's say we want to open a dockable menu. Well, let's go look over an example of that. So let's go back to the um, uh, BP UI motion controller. And then what we want to look at is the uh, slot browser because that opens up a dockable menu. So what I want to do is go ahead and go into there uh, to the to the browser location of that. And if we look in here now, we have um, on its option sub menu to open a dockable window. All you got to do is pull from your parent UI controller, which is here. And we want to pull out the, the, the window browser itself, right? So uh, once we have that, we pipe that into toggle window visibility. So that's all you have to do to toggle it on and off as far through the UMG um, uh, radio menu itself. Now, but you also need to have uh, this available, this window browser. So let's try to make a new one. Let's, let's go ahead and do that from scratch. All right, so let's go to the uh, BPUI motion controller. And what we want to go to is a uh, function called create docking menus. Once you open that up, you'll see this is where we create all the docking menus that are available to us. Now we actually spawn this once we uh, go into the game. So we could incur the cost during loading time of actually spawning all the menus and we turn them off. And then whenever we want to load them, on demand, they're already uh, created objects. You won't have to have the cost of loading them into memory each time. They just turn on and off. Uh, they're already created. So there's some performance, gain, performance gains from that. So to set that up, uh, what we really need to do is just have uh, one node called spawn docking menu and then set that variable. So what we need to do first is go over here. We, we have that spawn nuke. So let's go ahead and make a new window for the uh, nuke itself. Let's go ahead and add a, uh, let's go to the dock window. So we want to go ahead and say, take an, the easy way is just take one of these like window slider and let's right click and hit duplicate and we'll call it window uh, uh, nuke I guess that's fine uh, and then what we want to do is uh, we want to be able to set that and then I want to copy this class down here this uh, spawn docking menu and we'll go into here and we'll set this window nuke and then what we really want to do is set the resolution uh, so let's this one's gonna be, let's make this one a square one. So the resolution is gonna be a 500 by 500. We've talked about some of these settings before uh, on a different video for the uh, uh, spawning windows in the uh, level. So we'll go ahead and uh, pick a class. Let's pick, a, I don't know, let's pick a, a 
gas mask. So this is going to be the widget that's going to be put inside of the uh, window itself. It's going to be square. It's going to be 500, 500 resolution. And let's say, let's make it a little smaller. Let's make it scale of 50. All right, so there we go. That's all I got to do to actually create the new dockable window that we have desired. And of course, the UMG window stuff um, is the same as the other topic you create. Uh, any kind of UMG widget to, to fit in there. So you just got to put the right scale and the resolution, and that's it. So now what we need to do is go and actually spawn it from the nuke um, UMG widget itself. All right, so let's go over to the uh, nuke uh, UMG widget. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, Go back to the nuke side of it. There it is, nuke, and bring it up. And we go over to the on click for the nuke. So now when we when we have that new uh, default menu category, which is this a nuke icon, we click on that nuke icon. We want it to open up uh, a dockable window with a gas mask uh, picture on it. So now what we need to do is, well, we need to get that gas mask or the nuke um, uh, window here, the variable that we set. So here's that get window nuke. And then what we need to do is call toggle visibility toggle window visibility under dockable windows and click on that and then we can click here click that into the dockable window and then uh, this is just some help information we don't need to uh, worry about that we'll go straight to here and that's pretty much it hit save <clears throat> and there we have it so let's go ahead and show you what that looks like uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up the VR all right, now we're in VR, and you can see that I have my menu. And if you look on the left side, I knew have that new category, this nuke icon. So now what we want to do is when we click on that new icon, we should have a new dockable window. So wherever I put my, my easel at here, I'll go ahead and click. It should spawn in front of me. Now we have this new gas mask icon in the window. You see how much smaller this window is. So you can see you can really make custom windows, small, big, large, whatever you want. You can move around like normal. So there you have it. So that's pretty much how we get uh, these new windows in there. And again, uh, the subcategories, if you look at this uh, inventory here, you click, you can see how it opens all these. And if I click on this one, it has a subcategory that you click on that and brings up all of these, right? So if I hit the home, uh, the trigger, uh, it'll go back one layer to the barracks and one more to the main menu. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and talk about how do we create these uh, widgets. Uh, let's go back to the editor. Now we're back in the editor and I want to go over how to make one of those uh, radial menus. So if you look over here in the content uh, folders, and there UMG have the two categories, windows. I keep that for all the dockable windows. And then the radial, that's where I keep all the different slots for the radial menu. If we look at the inventory slot, that's a good one. What I like to do is, if we just open it up, it's pretty simple as far as the design. Uh, but some of the things that's already in there that you might want to have is like the menu set. Um, the design itself is pretty simple. It's literally a border and a picture, so you can input any kind of icon or any kind of text, any kind of... Uh, design that you'd like, uh, but what I'd recommend to do is just uh, take this inventory or any other one that's already like the docker window set up, use that one and hit duplicate. And then this is my slot uh, new. And then my new slot, I can open that up and I have everything I need for creating the menu set here. I could change out what other widgets I want to load up or and actually, I can go ahead and change out my pictures I have in here for the icon I want there. So that's pretty straightforward on creating the UMG widget side of it for slots and the windows. They're very simple to use with the UMG. Um, let me know if there's any issues with that, but it's pretty straightforward of what I've uh, found out. I haven't seen any uh, limitations to it. Uh, and then the last thing we want to talk about is we could talk about the, um, the, the menu itself. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the viewport and then zoom in here. Oh, I don't want you. There we go. Let's go in here. All right, so let's talk about um, the motion controller mesh itself. Oh, this is not the right one. We want to go to the UI one. Here we go. And we want to go to the viewport and come on in here. Now, what we want to do is all, all this is uh, that's used in here is just a, a radial mesh. So you can actually change this mesh out to any style you want. You could export this out to your, to your main program, and you could have little spikes going on here and import that back in so you could easily change the mesh out. Um, you can also change out the, the uh, radial menu here, the material instance. If you go to that, uh, we can see we have this instance here, and we can... Uh, we can play with colors. You want different colors and different settings for that too. So it's definitely go nuts for any kind of design changes you want to do on that. Um, I'll go ahead and go back to here and we could just change the color to whatever we wanted to. So yeah, we could go green if we wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to cancel that and move on. All right. So uh, the last thing we talk about is the pointer widget. 
the pointer widget, uh, if you decided to change that, you can easily the same way too. It has its own material here and it has its own mesh and it can be changed out. Uh, just make sure that when you import export this new model in that it points in the right direction that's very important for the calculation so you need to make sure that it's, uh, it matches this orientation so just be a heads up on that and the final thing is a controller mesh uh, right now it defaults to using the uh, Vive controller or the Oculus controller touch controller depending on what system you have hooked up uh, you could change that out to whatever mesh you wanted so this is where you would do that at so if you wanted something special to hold it uh, or take that off and uh, use a, a built-in design for the, uh, the mesh itself you don't necessarily have to put a mesh there you can have it all inclusive into the uh, radial mesh design so there you have it that's pretty much a quick overview on how to set up the radial menu if you have any questions or comments please leave below and i'll get to those as soon as i can thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next video bye